All right, project day on ye old camper. Today, we're changing out the old Thetford throne for a brand new Dometic 320 porcelain bowl wood seat. Oh man, the Cadillac of toilets. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, stand by. So I'd venture a guess that 90% of you with an RV have one of these Thetford Aquamagic toilets. Um, it's not a terrible toilet, but it's shallow and not all that comfortable. And ours broke, so it's time to replace it. Uh, the most important thing with this mod is you need to measure from the back wall to the flange bolts. You need a minimum of 10 and a half inches, which is exactly what I have here. All right, I'm unboxing the new toilet. So um, it's got a traditional like residential style lid and inside are your instructions. And I'm hoping that that is the seal. Not sure what that is. I'll open it up, we'll find out in a second. It came with a three-in-one drop-in bowl cleaner and tank treatment. That's kind of nice. And then you got your instructions. I should probably read those. Uh, the seal is already sitting there, ready to go. And then on the foot pedal, you've got um, your new closet bolts and caps. Pretty cool. So you don't really need to order anything else. Um, you just want to have your standard set of tools on hand for plumbing at home. Once you're committed, step one, water pump off. And then I would also recommend bleed any residual pressure on the hot, hot and cold side. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> gotta unscrew the supply line. And I got some paper towels or a rag ready to catch any water. Should be just a little hand tight there. Got a little water dribbling out, no biggie. Ain't no thing. There we go, and we're free. Well, since I'm going to be probably moving the location of the supply line, um, you want to check to make sure that it's sitting in like if something's holding it up so it's not going to slip back through the hole. If it is, I'd recommend putting a clamp on right here so it doesn't fall through the floor and you have to chase it in the underbelly. But I'm going to go ahead and take this coupling off as well. And this will probably need a wrench. Yep, that's going to need a wrench. If you've ever done a residential toilet, it's really no different. These should not be all that tight. Just enough to snug the toilet down and get a good seal down below, but you don't want these things he manned down, otherwise you're gonna crack your toilet. All right, to the other side. And for my next trick, I'm gonna lift the toilet off the flange and I'm gonna move this a little closer, but I've got a trash bag prepared on the cardboard kind of runner that the other toilet came in. This is just gonna keep any um, fun off the floor. Get the old seal off of there and it's, oh, I got gloves on, but it's, it's wet. It's like moist. Gah! All right, done with you. Aquamagic, my keister. Here's one more important consideration. On the Thetford, the water supply comes right dead center in the toilet. This one we're offset a little ways. So I have some PEX plumbing and some assorted fittings to get my water supply over to this point. You can use a standard half inch uh, flex line to do this, or in my case, since I have the PEX tools already, I'm just gonna build a little jog out of some blue PEX piping. It can be helpful to have a buddy to help guide, the, guide those closet flange bolts. I'm right up against the hole there. I think it's gonna be okay. Here's what I'm getting at. We got the lip of the new toilet is sitting right on top of that trim ring. So what I think I might do is just cut that trim ring down. I don't wanna drill a new hole in the floor because everything else is lining up okay. I'm using a knife next to plastic PEX piping, so gotta be extra careful that I don't get the piping. But fairly fresh utility knife should help. And I'm doing new flooring too, so I'm not too worried about the flooring. All right, and then some pliers, and that should come right out. Or, hey, there we go. That's gonna do just fine. Now you can see the offset I've gotta deal with. Um, it's pretty close, but PEX isn't all that flexible. I just have to get an elbow an elbow and a half inch fitting in that space, and that's not really a whole lot of room to work with. Well, let me, I'm gonna dry fit something up and I'll show you what I come up with. 
All right, going after it. Got some half inch pecs here. After fabbing this up, I feel like it might make more sense to use a flex line, but I don't have a flex line today. So let's see what we get. If you've never used PEX fittings before, pretty darn easy. You just need to buy the clamper for like 50 bucks, and then the fittings are pretty cheap. Cheaper than the push fittings. This is my go, no go gauge. Um, this will be used, we're gonna use in the half inch side. It tells you, you know, if you have a, a go on the half inch, um, you know, you've got a good fitting. And this tool can be calibrated, but it came pretty well calibrated from the factory. So you just put your... My squeezer. The only problem with these tools is they take a lot of physical space. So if you ever have to do this kind of stuff, like under a kitchen cabinet, <clears throat> it's tricky. But that's all there is to it. Just kind of snap it. And then I'm gonna check my no-go side first and you put it over the tool and it should not fit over there as it does not. And then you check your go side and if the go fits, you're good. And the go fits. Oh, I should mention, this is a dressing tool. It's used to kind of bevel the ends and make it easier for the uh, rings to go over them and ensure you get a good seal. So you just kind of run the fitting around. There's a little knife in there that carves out a piece of plastic and you get a nice little bevel on the end. Hey, dummy, you figured it out. We're awfully tricky. Uh, test fit. Take some slack out. Hey, cool. And then this just runs down finger tight. It's got good sized wings on it so you can get purchase. <clears throat> okay, now, but I'm gonna turn the water pump on and we're gonna check for leaks. Is that turning? It is turning. Okay, we're gonna watch that carefully for leaks. Here we go. I'm not seeing any leaks. So we're gonna leave the water pump on while we finish up. And then when we're done, we're gonna check for water on the floor. Okay, second to last step, we're just gonna put the closet bolts back on and covers. And once I feel like it's down, we're gonna test its function. Conjunction, junction. Okay, again, no He-Man allowed here. We're just trying to get this flange to seat and get a nice seal. These old caps are too big. So I don't have a hacksaw with me, but the last step is gonna be to cut this, the top of this down. This is a brass bolt. I'm um, being very careful working next to the toilet. And then I'm gonna put the cap over the top of it. Never used it before, but I'm guessing we do part, partial, and we're getting water everywhere and then the flapper opens beautiful all right well there you have it the new toilets in place you can see it's quite a bit bigger uh, I've checked that last water fitting and it's not leaking so I'm calling this good to go uh, we've lost a little bit of our foot space in front of the sink but it's probably worth it just to have a real throne in here thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the adventure until next time